I still had to learn a lot more. Like at this point in my own development, I had uh, done a lot of work psychologically speaking with what in Jungian term you might call a, a mother complex. With how I had a big mother complex, all these issues about the, the, the mother and the feminine that were uh, uh, had to do with how I was raised by my mother. Okay, that was what I was working on and a lot of my inner work and my dream work and stuff that doesn't make it into here, particularly the other places where I talk about so, you know, my stuff. Uh, I'm doing that simultaneously all of the time. Well, I, got, I had a lot of success at that, I felt. Uh, and uh, what happened was uh, that's, uh, in an inner sense, allowed me to feel I could get strong enough to not just be the buddy of Harry. I wasn't just the extension of Harry. I always had my own views when I was organizing with him. I had my own views before I met him. Okay. He didn't have any interest in other kinds of views. Here's a really interesting story about that. Uh, I, this essay that I started to read you, the first essay in 1976, uh, I decided I'd make up a strange name for uh, the spirit of being gay, the spirit of gayness, which I called Royka. Okay. So uh, Harry and John lived in New Mexico. We're coming out here for just they would do that. They'd come out here and we had this little scene, mini scene going. And, and the place where they were going to stay, the two gay men who stayed, lived in this place, was out in Silver Lake. They lived on a sloping um, uh, hillside. And they had spelled out like little pebbles on dirt, Royka, mm. but for Harry and John when they drove up. Just thinking that once on one boat. This is like, this is like 1979, 1980 or something like that. So long after I wrote the essay. So it's all real down and all that. Well, this guy, this complaint to me afterwards, the guy who, uh, put, when his lover put the stuff out, also Harry and John there at their home. Uh, Harry, Harry and nor, nor John didn't say any, not only did they say nothing, that they'd spelled out Royka on the front, but they seemed to be going out of their way to not notice that that was there. And this guy couldn't understand it. And I said, uh, I, I remember saying to him, you have to understand that actually within the organizing group of the fairies, there's a complicated politics. It's not what it looks like from the outside, necessarily. It's actually, there's a lot of challenging stuff going on. And uh, I was sorry to see that have to happen uh, because um, underneath, that was why me and, and Don quit the fairies, was because uh, uh, Harry and his partner John in a very codependent way, they were very passive aggressive. And they weren't interested, not only were they not interested in playing fair in terms of dealing with that. They were going to push it to the hilt. And they were never going to bend. Harry was amazing in this way. So one could admire him for his stubbornness, but it was like a, an amazing stupidity that is the stupidity of sticking with your, your defenses, even if they kill you or they kill everyone else. <sighs> if you can imagine that. Supposed leader of the fairies became that bad, or so to speak, that's what came out in the open. I got the issue got pushed. That's why me and, and Don and quit. Don didn't know anything about this, but because I kept being weird, like just being with you, but back then, uh, and so he became intrigued and eventually uh, uh, got some sense that oh yeah, things are psychological. It actually is reality, subjectively speaking. I began to understand how Harry and John were out of it on that awful way. He tried, Don tried to work with them, but they weren't responsive. And so eventually we realized we had to go our own way. Uh, what's the birth of tree roots? Quit instead of tree roots. We had to go through many developments that then eventually became this institute, that eventually put on this club where we are here. Yeah, the whole time. You see why I, I mentioned, oh, what are you feeling now, or do you have any reactions now? Because otherwise, you yak, 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 and already it's going to be like 9.30. Sorry. Uh, I hope, I hope you, uh, you're not just numbed out in your bodies, wherever you are. My apologies to go on, I didn't, I didn't. I'm kind of closer on the clock. There it is. Okay, we're almost at the end. Uh, I don't know if we should go into any questions or answers because they get mean if we go past 9.30. They don't like it. For some obscure reason, they don't, they don't think it's nice if we go past 9.30 and they get rather hostile. 
So they try and act pleasant about it, but um, it's not the People's Republic or West Hollywood that's why that some people might feel about it, uh, unfortunately. So uh, I'm sorry for babbling on. Um, I hope you found this informative, or at least interesting, or at least somewhat stimulating, or at least something. Uh, uh, more than just simply if you encountered the book. And for those of you who do encounter the book or do have to do it in the context of, say, the training, I hope this gives some context to it. Otherwise, that perhaps uh, might have been a little interest in terms of, of, of someone who a generation ago was interested in spending their life all the time trying to deal with this stuff. Who still lives that way. So, I don't know. See, if I invite all the talk, it's going to be draggy because we've only got a minute left. My apologies again. Maybe we should just wrap it up then. Without them, any questions or answers. So let's see how we can squeeze it in, Roger. I am very sorry about that. My apologies. I feel a little bit silly about that a little bit. No, it's okay to ramble on because of uh, the uh, time capsule factor. But uh, uh, I would. Don't want it to be with the impression that I'm not concerned with how you're all how your bodies are in the chairs, how you're all feeling there, and if we could have more interaction, I'd love that. Especially on the basis of just hanging out, trying to a little bit with you vis-a-vis -vis the material in here. It kind of begs for that in a way. Uh, and if we didn't have the time restriction, I would love to actually do that with you more so. I didn't schedule it, as you can see, coordinate and look at the clock carefully enough to notice that. So my apologies for that, because I think it would be more interesting if you had a chance more so to react, like some of the reactions we did get. And I hope you are having some reactions. I invite you to, you know, we'll have to clean up the space, and then we'll have to go disperse from any formal meeting. But we can continue to engage with stuff around this kind of stuff. Uh, and I will have a third part on this, as I mentioned to you. I will have to get in how it can develop further and became like, what's in this? I'll have to read from this and talk about how it changed this is really important development from men loving men. Right there, even though I talk a little about the double in here, there's no with the other world and we're going to the other world now and we're gonna not be loyal to this world anymore and blah, 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 like that. Uh, that's this strange thing that I presented this evening. I hope it came across a little bit. It's now otherwise just the dust of history. It has no existence at all. Uh, but thank you for being patient. You've been very patient uh, during this uh, couple of hours. Thank you very much, or an hour and a half or so. Uh, and uh, please feel free to come back. Uh, we want to, this is all in the context of the history of becoming uh, gay centered in a psychologically mindful way as a real practice. And really doing that, that's where the action is, being able to figure that out and get into it. So, this is a little uh, you know, a bit about the history. Uh, okay, uh, turn it back over to Roger. Thank you very much. And uh, Roger will close it for tonight. All right, everybody. So the, our public monthly meeting for the Uranus Psychotic Club is the first Saturday of every month. That means December 3rd. Our next meeting will be this uh, exploration about the new advanced training program uh, and how we've been doing over the first four months of the training program. Um, so I encourage you all to come. You should all have flyers for that. Please um, leave your evaluations filled out at the front desk. And then we're going to invite people to help us set up the tables. And you can continue the conversation out in the front if, if you'd like. Thanks, everybody. See you next month. Thank you.